spiritually. And then we really want to uh, remember Rob West this morning. He's not doing very well at all. And uh, we know, though, that God is able. And so we want to uh, intercede on these uh, on the, beh- the behalf of these requests and these individuals and ask that God would bring healing and would be with them. You can make your own requests known by an upraised hand. There are many, but our God is able. So with those things in mind, let us go to our Father in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day that you have so graciously and faithfully given us. Father, we thank you that you have woken us up this morning and that you have given us the strength to come and to be in your house and to be among your people, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Father, we're thankful that you have given us guidance, that you have directed our lives. We're thankful for the testimonies that we have. I I thank you, God, that as I look around and I consider each life here, uh, it's, it's overwhelming to think that you have been at work in each one of our lives, speaking to us and drawing us and convicting us. God, we thank you that you are such a faithful God, and we thank you that you are so able that no matter what our problem is, no matter what uh, trial we may be going through, that you are our great shepherd who walks alongside of us, who guides us to green pastures and beside still waters. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you that you are our good shepherd. Father, we ask that you would be with these different needs, that you would be that good shepherd that you are to those that are walking through those dark, dark valleys. Father, we think of these especially that are going through sicknesses. Um, Father, we ask that you would bring healing to these bodies, that you would move, God, that you would restore. As we read the Gospels, we are uh, overwhelmed by your power, Father. I'm overwhelmed by the, the, the ability that you had, that Jesus was able to just heal with a word. Father, I'm overwhelmed when I think about the woman who just touched the hem of his garment and was healed. And I know that you are the same God yesterday, today, and forever, that you have not changed in the slightest in 2,000 years. And that you are still able to heal and to bring wholeness. Father, that you are still able to encourage both physically and spiritually. That you are still able to impart that grace that we so desperately need, Father, as we walk through difficulties and trials. And we ask in the name of your son, Jesus, that you would bring healing to these bodies, these names that we've mentioned. Father, we ask that you would restore them that you might receive glory and honor and praise. Father, we ask that you would be at work in these lives especially. We also think of those that are, uh, go, have gone through surgeries and are going through surgeries. And we ask that you would uh, bring, bring a, a steady hand to the doctors, that you would give wisdom and understanding and that you would bring a speedy recovery. Father, we also think of those that have lost loved ones recently, those that have uh, just seems as though there's a hole where someone once stood we ask that you would comfort them as only you are able that your peace which passes all understanding would overwhelm them father and that they would recognize you and that they would depend on you and that they would find their hope in you and in you alone father we ask that you would be with those that are in 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 need this morning and father we also think of all of the hands that were raised just a few moments ago and though we might not know every need we might might not know every concern We might not know every problem and every trial. I thank you that we don't have to. Father, I thank you that we don't have to list everything by name for you to hear and for you to know. So as you look down on these hands that have been raised, you know exactly what the problems are. Father, you know the, the exact situation, the exact circumstances. You know it all. It's all laid bare before you. And we ask that you would move in these circumstances and that you would work in such a way that we would be drawn to you and that we would have a greater dependence on you and on you alone and that you would be glorified in our midst, Father, that we might be able to come back and to testify to your goodness and to your power and to your ability to, uh, to heal and to work and to move and to transform and to change and to do all of the things that only you can do. So, Father, we just put these requests and these concerns uh, at your feet, and we ask that you would do with them what you will, and that your will would be done. 
Finally, Father, I ask that you would be in this service, that everything that is said and done and thought would be pleasing to you and would glorify you and would honor you and would point each one of us towards you. Father, help us. We ask that you would draw us to you as a result of having been among our brothers and sisters. We ask that you would meet us here this morning, that you would meet us in the songs that are sung, that you would meet us in the prayers that are prayed, that you would meet us in any testimony that is shared, and that you would meet us in your word as it is preached and father that you would speak to us and that you would convict us and that you would draw us and that ultimately you would leave us at the end of this service more holy and more more dependent on you and deeper in your presence than we were when we came in Amen. father we ask that you would have your way in this service in our lives and in all things and we will give you praise and glory and honor as we ask these things in the name of your son jesus amen
number 255 please we'll take her morning tithes and offerings a song of joy everybody smile look saved God deserves everything we can give him number 255 <laughs> Sing it. Salvation's free, glad joy to all of Adam's fallen race. We'll tell the story far and near of saving, keeping grace. There's joy, glad joy, now flowing from above. There's joy, glad joy, in the fall. Of his love from wells of everlasting joy, our strength by 
of his love. Amen. Brother Jeremy has a song this morning. Before I, uh, before I sing this, it's been a while since I've sang and you know, my hands shake a lot. Brenda asked me to sing this song two weeks ago. And I've sang this song several times. And everyone in our congregation knows, once you hear the lyrics, why she asked me to sing it. We all know that Brenda's going through her head and cancer on head on with her chemo treatment. But I think there's a lot of people, new people, Maybe you're new to our church that don't know the things that are her burdens and a lot of our burdens. And I got to looking at the songs. It's been so long since I've sang it. But I got to thinking to myself that I've been through a lot of struggles on my own from the last time I sang this song. And we all have. It's like Sherm just said, we all have. We're all going through something. We went through something that shook our faith, shook us down to our core. But the chorus of the song is that I'm still holding on. And that's what we need to show people that aren't maybe part of our congregation. Because I think the worst perception that we can give people is that everything's just great in our world. That even though we smile and we shake hands and we love one another, we still go through things that we may not share with other people. But we all have something. Whether you've lost a loved one or maybe you've just lost a friend. Maybe you're going through some disease. But we need to share that more often, I do believe. And this song is a big, strong message that when we do go through those things, if we just keep holding on, yes. I can still think of walking my son through Disney World. And I thought he was a big boy. And he grabbed my hand the whole night we walked through there. I thought it was so funny that he held my hand, but he was just so nervous. And he knew that he was a little scared, but he kept a hold of my hand and we made it through. So when you hear the words of this song, take heart, because we're all gonna go through something, whether it may be you already haven't or you're going to. Just keep hanging on. said I'd never make it They said I'd never see it through They don't know what keeps me going I guess they never have met you 
Oh, my life was in shambles Till the day you came along You turned my tears into laughter Lord, you gave me a brand new song And I'm still holding Lord, I'll never let you go Cause you gave me a smile You touched my heart and you touched my soul And all the bridges that's behind me I had to burn them to the ground And I'm still holding on to the best thing I ever found. Vote it likely not to prosper. Was left hanging over my head. You'll never count for nothing. That's what most people say See, I've been known to be unsettled I've never stayed around too long But you're the treasure I've been searching Lord, I'm still holding on And I'm still holding on And Lord, I'll never let you go Cause you gave me a smile You touched my heart and you touched my soul and all those bridges that's behind me I had to burn them to the ground I'm still holding on To the best thing I ever found And all those bridges that's behind you You'll have to burn them to the ground Cause I'm still holding on To the best thing I ever found If you have your Bible, would you turn to Jeremiah, the 29th chapter? Jeremiah 29. Jeremy, thank you for that beautiful song. You stole my message. It never ceases to amaze me how the song service and the message when neither one of us knows what the other is doing but they complement one another and they fit like a glove and that just encourages me because it happens all the time and that gives me confidence to know that what a wonderful privilege it is to serve 
a God like our God. A God that knows the end from the beginning. A God that understands well beyond what we're thinking. A God who knows how to take care of us. A God who knows how to walk us through the valleys of the shadows of death. It's just wonderful to know, church, that we are in good hands. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> wonderful song. And I'm still holding on. And good admonition, I'll never let go. Where can we go? Where can we go when trouble comes into our lives? Where can we go when we have to bury a loved one? Where can we go when a spouse comes up to another after being married for years and says, I'm through? Where can we go when the doctor says the report is not good? We all know where we can go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank God. So <clears throat> I've chosen for a text this morning, Jeremiah 29. As a matter of fact, Jeremiah 29 and 13 is one of my favorite verses. And you shall seek me and you shall find me when you shall search for me with all of your heart. It's a great verse. In fact, it's a fabulous verse. But let's pick it up in verse 10, Jeremiah 29. <clears throat> For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will listen to you, I will hear you, and ye shall seek me, and ye shall find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. I'm thinking good thoughts. I'm thinking happy thoughts. I'm thinking peaceful thoughts toward you. I'm not thinking evil thoughts. I'm not thinking and wanting to think of thoughts that are going to bring you harm and destruction. I'm thinking thoughts of peace, not evil. And I'm thinking in the end to give you hope and to give you eternal life and to give you peace and joy forever. This is a message for hard times. Hearts that were happy and find their lives interrupted with trouble and heartaches. It was to God's people that Jeremiah wrote this letter. He wrote this letter to people who were down and out. He wrote it to people whose worlds were turned upside down. But his advice was, make the most of their limitations. He said to them, make the most of your situation. Live as close to God as you possibly can. And for some that were in Babylonian captivity, who were carried away as slaves, they serve God. They made
made the most of their situation. They got as close to God as they possibly could. And then for others, they ignored Jeremiah. Part of the reason that they ended up in Babylonian captivity, part of the reason that they lost every blessing, every privilege, every opportunity, was because they rejected God. Because every time Jeremiah preached the truth to them, they picked up stones, they wanted to kill the man. They didn't want to hear a thing that God had to say. Yet, that is exactly what our world needs more than anything this morning, is to hear what the Lord has to say. Because there's nobody else in the universe that has the capability of helping us in a fallen world like the one that we're living in today. Amen? So, Jeremiah's advice was, hold on to God, make the most of it. But the incentive for those who wanted to make the most of their trials was to keep this thought in mind. And that thought was, that no matter what you're going through, no matter how difficult your situation is right now, Jeremiah said, I want you to know what God has asked me to tell you. And that is that his thoughts towards you are for peace and not evil. God's purpose for all men is good, very good. God's plan far exceeds our plans. His thoughts are far above our thoughts as the heavens are above the earth. God just happens to be a little bit smarter than you and I. He's the manufacturer of our bodies. He is the creator of the world. He spoke the stars and the galaxies into existence. And you and I are fearfully and wonderfully made and it's amazing the thousands of things that have to coordinate in our body at the right time, at precisely the right moment for you and I to continue to exist. These hearts Sister Vaughn, you're, you're, you're how old? 98. I don't know any batteries that run that long. Amen? Listen, folks. You're out of your mind this morning if you try to live your life without God. Don't for a minute, minute think that you can match wits with God. I laugh. I feel sorry. I pity these people who lift their fists towards God. Uh, and they say, God, you got to do this. And, and I'm mad at you, God, because you did that. And you took my loved one away. You, who do you think you are? Dangerous. Dangerous thoughts. But Jeremiah comes along and says to a people, I know just the thing that you need to hear when you're going through a heartache. You need to know that God's thoughts towards you are for good. They're for peace and they're not for evil. Jeremiah was saying to these captives, hold on to God, Jeremy. Hold on to God because he can give you hope in the end. What happens when trouble comes our way? What happens when we think there's no hope, no way out, and we have no heart or no spirit left to try to make the most of our situations? Trust God. Believe in God. Why? 
Because God can bring order out of chaos and light out of darkness. Look what God did for Joseph. Look what he did for Moses. Look what he did for Jesus when he was crucified. Everybody was tempted to think it was curtains for Joseph. His brothers tried to kill him. They throw him in a pit. Uh, he, he, he ends up becoming a slave. He's sold as a slave. He ends up uh, becoming a jailbird. They thought it's curtains for Joseph. And then they looked at Moses and they said, look at the man. He's crazy. He's out of his mind. He thinks he's going to take on Pharaoh. Pharaoh is going to crush him like a grape. And then they said, uh, look at the Lord Jesus, uh, 33 years old, and now his life is snuffed out by a bunch of murderers. They thought it was over. But they forgot to factor in one little bit of information. And that that was Joseph was a child of God. Moses was a child of God. And Jesus was the son of the living God. And Joseph come out on top. And Moses come out on top. And when they crucified Jesus Christ, they were dancing a jig. They thought they had destroyed him. And they put him on the cross and hung him up as a shame to the whole world. And God took what was a shame and what was a murderous idea and turned it around for a coronation. And Jesus Christ became the Lamb of God who takes away my sins and your sins and all the world's sins. God can take a bad situation and he can turn it around. And he can turn it around in a hurry. Amen? Amen? How can we survive our heartaches and troubles? Because as Christians, our belief is we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Because we believe God can give us the hope, uh, the, uh, the, can, God can give us the hope uh, that the disciplines and disappointments of life are not meaningless. They're not purposelessness but designed by a divine architect for our good and the good of others and victory eternally in the end for every child of God. Listen to me. This is God's world. Did you hear me? This is God's world. It's not water's world. It's not your world. It's not my world. It's not man's world. It's God's world. And if that's true, and it is, then wherever we are, he can reach us. He can save us. He can deliver us. He can give us victory in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if he can reach us, then every experience in your life, good or bad, glad or sad, will be made to yield its blessings to our enrichment and the fulfillment of God's will. Verse 11 is one of those wonderful verses in the Bible. I have seen it quoted in letters, in graduation cards. It's been read to six folks. Those that are in trouble, those that are discouraged. It's a picker-upper because it makes wonderful promises to God's people, especially when they are going through turbulent times. It's been a life savior for troubled hearts for centuries. But in the context in which it is written, it may not Makes sense. God's people have, gen, have, have just been taken captive by Nebuchadnezzar. 
God turned his people over to the Babylonians. He let the devil do whatever he wanted to do to them. And that's the context in which it is written. Those beautiful words in verse 11. In spite of all their failures, in spite of all our failures, a heartwarming thought emerges from the throne of God. I know the thoughts that I think of you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. I want to give you a future. I want to give you a hope. In other words, God is saying, for all those who have failed, for all of those who have messed up their lives, for all of those who have squandered away golden opportunities to be blessed by God, I have not lost sight of my plan for you, God says. I have your welfare in mind. I have your peace in mind. I have your happiness in mind. I am not thinking evil thoughts. I am not thinking that I want to destroy you. No matter where you are in life, up or down, in or out, saved or unsaved, God is thinking good thoughts of you and me all the time. That's probably the most important statement you'll hear. That wherever you are in life, wherever life has dumped you, hurt you, broken you, abused you, not for one second are we ever forgotten by God. That's why 2 Peter 3, 9 says, For the Lord hasn't forgotten his promise. He's not slack concerning his promise towards us, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that every soul should come to repentance. Oh, I want you to know this morning, you got somebody in your corner that can fight the battle for you and win it. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we thought of each other like the Lord thinks of us? Wouldn't it be pleasant if we entertained only warm thoughts and best wishes for one another? But the truth is, tragically, too often, most of us are better at remembering the bad things. We're like elephants. They say elephants don't ever forget a thing. How does anybody know that? I've never heard an elephant talk and say, you tried to kill me 30 years ago with that rifle. But we can remember every bad thing that everybody has done. And you know what's amazing? We forget about what we done. Isn't that amazing? We can remember everything that everybody else did bad, but when it comes to what we have done, amnesia. Amen. Those poor Jews were in Babylonian captivity for 70 years. Their sins and rebellions against God landed them there. But not for one day of all those 70 years did God forget them. How in the world can people turn their backs on a God like that? How in the world can people get so busy they forget God? You know what Psalm 137 says? By the rivers of Babylon we wept when we remembered Zion. Oh Jerusalem, if I do not remember thee, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. And I want everybody to do this this morning. I want you to take your tongue and hold it up against the roof of your mouth. And I want you to talk out loud. And I want you to look at your neighbor and say, what a lovely day this is. You know what the psalmist is teaching you and I? 
Amen. God bless you, brother. When you're hanging your harps on the willows down in Babylon, you don't have a song. You don't have the heart to want to play an instrument. You don't have the spirit to want to praise God and thank God. <laughs> Next time your wife's giving you a hard time and you want to get away with saying what you're thinking, <laughs> and for those of you who love God and find yourself in trouble this morning and you're saying to yourself Lord why is this happening to me why is this happening to us? Why is this happening to our family? Why is this happening to my children? Why is this happening to our church? We can find great comfort in knowing that God is carrying out a plan for everybody's welfare. You've got to know that all things do indeed emphatically work together for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. You've got to know that God is bigger than anything else we're going through. <clears throat> You've heard me say, God has a better plan for our lives than we'll ever have for ourselves. And it's easy to agree with that idea that God has a wonderful plan for our lives. It's easy to agree when we like the plan. But what do you do when you don't like the plan? What do you do when God's plan has taken you through the valleys? The valleys of the shadow of death. Your spouse says, what do you do when life suddenly takes a bad turn? And your spouse says, I want a divorce after so many years. Or your boss calls you in right after you purchase a new home and says, we're going to have to let you go. Or your children are being seduced by all the lies and the false promises of the media propaganda. What do you do when you forget to pay your taxes and now you find out you owe Caesar $10,000 but you can't even pay your bills? What do you do when your spouse is suffering? What do you do when there are social conflicts going on and on and on and on, life just keeps unraveling. What do you do when God doesn't come through for you? How do you keep hope alive when all around us things look hopeless and are falling apart? What do we do? What do we do when we are led to come face to face with a difficult but an undeniable reality. And that is sometimes God's plan doesn't look so good to us. What then? Sometimes God's plan ends up breaking our hearts, scaring us to death. How easy it is to take God's blessings for granted. How easy it is to take God for granted. How easy it is when God fills our arms up with blessings and we get so caught up in all the good material blessings of life and we begin to forget God and we begin to turn those blessings into idols. How easy it is to take God's blessings for granted. The Jews... What a history of seeing God come to their rescue. Moses delivered them from Egyptian bondage. God opened up the Red Sea. 
He let manna fall from heaven. Water come out of a rock. God sustained them for 40 years in the wilderness. They didn't even have to buy another pair of shoes, another pair of pants, or another dress, whatever they wore. The walls of Jericho came tumbling down. David took on Goliath. Samson defeated the Philistines. It happened when Gideon, with 300 men, conquered an army of 135,000 Midianites. Over and over and over again, when the children of God found themselves in trouble, outnumbered and outgunned by enemy nations, God intervened. Now, if you were the children of Israel, wouldn't you think that you were a little special? Wouldn't you? Well, that's what happened to him. It went to their head when it should have stayed in their hearts. And they started taking it for granted. A good place to worship God. A place to hear the truth. A place to be encouraged. A place to be challenged. A place to have fellowship. A place to, to, to meet one another and, and find a spouse in the house of God. A place where we could grow up together and never have the sense of being alone. A place where we are encouraged to keep on keeping on. You got a good home. Not because of Casey, not because of me, not because of our choir, not because of our song leader. But because God has decided to hang out with us. And you walk away from that, you need your head examined. And if you don't think so, shop around. Sherm, you go to Florida. My twin's down there. My sister-in-law told me, Sherm, you've told me the same thing. The only thing they got going on down here is sunshine. Amen. I'm not saying it's wrong to go to Florida. I'm just saying it's dangerous. Ah. <laughs> God's blessings and goodness happen so often to God's people. That they just come to believe that they could just live any way they want to and God would always be there. But blessings ignored and obedience neglected and love for God waxing cold, Israel eventually lost her blessings. They enjoyed their privileges. They enjoyed their blessings but the responsibilities and the warnings of God's word never seem to take a hold in their hearts. We will never properly understand this verse unless we know a little bit about the background. The people of God, for their rejection and disobedience of God, they were uprooted and taken captive by a foreign country. They were taken like slaves, all their dreams and hopes were shattered and smashed and their privileges and blessings were taken from them. Deep inside, they wondered, how could God let this happen? Did God forget us? Did God no longer love us? They thought things like this would never happen to them. You want to know something? America tonight, this morning, tomorrow, right now is on the same path. 
And there are countries out there that want to accommodate the devil. And this is the word of God for us this morning. Don't think for, don't let the devil intimidate you. Don't think for a moment because you have failed and we've all failed. And because we're going through hardships and heartaches and trials or whatever it is that's happening to you now, don't think that God for a minute has lost sight of you. We are never out of sight and out of mind when it comes to God. It's no secret our trials and tribulations are opportunities for the devil to assault us and accuse us day and night. Well, the next time the devil comes around and starts with his dark thoughts and threats of harm, just tell him, I got something to tell you, old boy. The Lord's thoughts towards us are not evil. They're peace and happiness and joy. So take a walk. Amen. There are many reasons God allows us to go through trials, right? There's a lot of reasons we suffer a lot of pain, a lot of anguish. Sometimes God is trying to purge us of sin and carnality. He also uses trials to test our faith. Wants to know if we're going to obey God through our trials. Wants to know if we're going to serve him faithfully when things are going wrong. Will we hold on to truth when everybody and everything around us is compromising? Sometimes God uses hard times to prepare us for callings upon our lives. Sometimes the hardships drive us closer to God. Right in the midst of their captivity and suffering, God says in the 11th verse, I've got wonderful future for you. I have a blessed hope waiting for you. And while God used Nebuchadnezzar to take them captive 70 years later, he used another king, Cyrus, to deliver them. God knows how to take care of us. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world. He's got me and you, brother. He got the whole. You sound as bad as I do. <laughs> Moving right along. What should we do? What should we do? When our trials and tribulations turn our world upside down. What should we do when everything looks gloomy? We should submit ourselves to God. There is always something to be hoped for in the Christian life. And nothing will take it away from those who love God. Both sin and death have been conquered through our Lord Jesus Christ. And whatever we go through in this life, we will have what we need when we need it. Ask Daniel in the lion's den. Ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Hudak in the fiery furnace. Ask David when he's looking at a giant, looking at a giant. Ask Paul and Silas in a Philippian jail. Ask the children of Israel in Babylonian camp. Ask the saints uh, down through the ages, the martyrs, the prophets. Ask Paul and Stephen. The providence of God is in control of his people every step of the way. And either we believe it or we don't. And those of us who know the Lord can say for sure, the Lord was with me all the way through it. And you know what else? 
the peace and the joy and the happiness and the glory of God is never going to end. So hold on, my child. Joy comes in the morning. Someone might think how politically incorrect, how cruel of God, what kind of God is he to allow his people to go into 70 years of Babylonian captivity. But looking at it from this side of Calvary, God had a plan, a very good plan, by sending his people into captivity. You might think it was intended for evil, but God used the whole situation for his purpose and his good. Israel became infected with idolatry. You read in the Jeremiah chapters uh, 4 and 5, and, and, and you, you, you hear everything that those people did. In Jeremiah 4.22, God says, My people are foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish. They are stupid children is what that means. Uh, and they have no understanding. They are wise to do evil. But when it comes to doing good, they're sottish. They're stupid. They can come up with all kinds of laws and all kinds of this and all kinds of that and all kinds of reasons to butcher 55, 60 million babies. They can come up with reasons to change the gender. They can come up. They've got all kinds of ingenuity when it comes to doing evil. But when it comes to serving God, blank. And yet God still has thoughts of good towards everybody. God still wants everybody to make it home before dark. So God put them into a system. They wanted idols. God put them into a system that was saturated with idols. And you know what the result was? They never ever worship Baal again. However, they did continue to flirt and have idolatry when it come to the heart. And that would always plague the Jews. But that worship of Baal was eradicated. Through Israel's captivity, God's power and presence was manifested all over a pagan world. Through Daniel and his friends, they wouldn't bend, they wouldn't bow, they wouldn't burn. And it was a powerful witness to the Babylonians that their God was greater than their idols. God's power was manifested as a witness among the Babylonians. As a result, the king himself ended up worshiping God. God raised up Daniel to a position of great influence for God in Babylon. And he became a great witness for the truth in the midst of pagans. He showed them an example of how godly people live. And Nebuchadnezzar himself became a believer. The Jews lived in peace in Babylon. Instead of persecuting them, their captors gave them freedom to develop their own communities. And during the 70 years of their captivity, many parts of the Old Testament, yes, many books in the Old Testament that are an inspiration to you and I today were written down in Babylon. So when you're going through it, just know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Here's the point. I'm getting ready to close. As far as the Jews were concerned, they were sent to Babylon thinking they were being punished for their sins. And they were. But the blessings of their hardships were hidden from their view at the beginning. And so it is 
for you and me. God has plans that serve his purposes even beyond the years that we are in the world. He does not confine himself to our puny understanding of what he intends to do with our lives altogether. Look at Joseph's story. You read that story, two-thirds through the story, you think, this poor man, it's not fair. This is not right what's happening. This man is a godly man. But give it a little time. Give it some fruition. And in the end, Joseph ends up saving God's people and making a way of escape when there was no escape. Escape the famines. Escape to being wiped out on the earth. And Joseph rose to the second in command right under Pharaoh's nose. So don't judge your end by the beginning. You may not know all that will result from your current troubles and heartaches. God's purposes span generations and centuries. How many stories have we heard of mothers, of saints praying and their prayers were answered and their loved ones were getting saved. But it didn't happen until after they endured many trials and struggles in life. And even after they died. So don't despair, children of God. When you find yourself in a life and death struggle, God has reasons we can't see. What may look like the valley of the shadow of death may very well be a benevolent master plan that God has ordained not only for your good, but for the welfare of others as well. Don't doubt him. Here's what we need to understand. Although God doesn't work on our timetables and he doesn't obligate himself to explain his purposes in advance, he wants us to know. The thoughts that he thinks towards us are thoughts of peace. Thoughts of happiness and not thoughts of evil or not thoughts of harm that would ever jeopardize our salvation and our love to God and our love for one another. There may be times when there is no relief from the pain and suffering and the sadness of this world, but not for a minute do we have to live without hope and without trust in God. The truth is, we're all going to hurt now and then along the way. We are still a death sentence generation living in a sin-cursed world. We start dying the moment we're born. No one is immune from the suffering of humanity. All of us sons and daughters of Adam live in the wreckage of their decision when they disobeyed God. There is no escape from the reality of a fallen world. But thanks be unto God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we have escaped the power of sin and the wrath to come through the blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. God came up with a plan that enabled you and I, living in the midst of a fallen world, not to have to fall with it, but to conquer it. And sin shall not have dominion over us. What a shame, what a disgrace, what a failure when preachers are preaching. I sin, you sin, we all have to sin. Get a better message because there is one in the book. So when you hurt, we have two choices. 
we can hurt with God or we can hurt without God. During the terrible days of the Boxer Rebellion, when missionaries were captured and killed, Hudson Taylor was ministering to the Chinese people. And he summarized his agony of soul in his journal because they knew the Chinese were wanting to wipe out every missionary, every ounce, every influence of Christianity. And don't be fooled, they still want to. And this is what he wrote. Hudson Taylor wrote, he said, I can't read. I can't think. I can't pray. But I can trust. There will be times when we can't read the Bible. When we can't focus our thoughts on God. When we can't even pray. There will be times when our minds will be filled with panic and fear. But in those moments, when we can't do anything else, we can still trust in a God who says in his word, I will never leave you and never forsake you. And my thoughts towards you are always for peace and not for evil. And if you don't think it's worth it to keep believing and keep trusting, keep trusting God with your life, then have it your way. But if you have eyes to see beyond your own problems, look up and you will see the hand of God at work sooner or later. So God bless all of you. And with a renewed perspective and a fresh zeal to face the heartaches and the problems of life, let us go forward into our futures inspired with God's word. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you hope in your final end. Good enough? Hopefully, none of the saints are becoming insensitive to the burdens and the heartaches that our brothers and sisters are going through. But the truth is, everybody's treading water to keep their heads above it. And sometimes, your burden doesn't become my burden because I got my own troubles. Brother Sherm, if you will, please. Good luck, Jeff. I don't, think I'm gonna win. don't mug him, just let him run around. Have him come up and help me preach. It's okay. Send him up here. When one member of the body suffers, like as Elizabeth is suffering right now, we all suffer <laughs> with her, with her. I'd rather be in the storm with God than in the storm without God. And if I'm speaking to someone this morning who's feeling the weight and the frustration and the fear and the pain and suffering of your trial, this would be a good time.
to thank God. This would be a good time to lean on the Lord and say, Lord, this thing has a, just about ready to overwhelm me. But you said your thoughts towards me were for peace. If you don't mind me asking, Lord, I need a little peace. I need a little help this morning. I need a lift. And I believe that if I bring my burden to you, that you'll help me. How many of us have found that to be true? Amen? So while Sherm sings this beautiful old song, and let me just say this, there's two things on my mind. They just come to me, they've been on my mind. When it comes time to sing, do you know how discouraging it is for the choir and the song leader to look out and over half this congregation hasn't even opened their mouths to sing the songs of Zion? And the second thing I want to say, you're not doing too good when it comes to supporting funerals. Oh, when one of yours die, you want everybody here. I'm not after anybody. But there used to be a time there were as many people in, in our funerals as they were in our services. Sometimes we can't get away. Sometimes schedules don't allow it. But more than 10 or 15 should be here. Now you take that for what it's worth. If you want a pastor, let me be a pastor. If you want just a preacher, have it your way. The church is still parallel with the family. And just as a family has parents, so a church has parents. I didn't ask to be your parent, but God called me to be your under shepherd. So I want to do the best job that I can do. And I want you to be the best kids that can be. Getting back to the message, anybody need to pray? Anybody going through something that they need a little bit of God's help this morning? God bless you as we pray. Would you like to stand, please? You've been a great audience. Now, we're going to sing, if you know the song. Sing it from your heart. Let the words and the message of the song inspire you. Is that asking too much? You know that world out there? They go nuts when a hip-hop song comes on, when rap comes on. When filth comes on, they go nuts. They put everything they got into it. Let's put a little something into it this morning. 
Amen. You still love me? God bless you as we sing. Be not Anyone need to pray? Come on. God will take care yes, he will. Every time. Will you let God take care of you? Because he really wants to. More than you'll ever know. God bless these that have come. There are others. One more verse, Brother Sherm. God bless you, Sister Nether. It's good to see you. Glad you're able to be here instead of in the second floor at ICU. Anyone else? The altars are open. God bless your heart. Thank God for these that have come. There are others. We all need a lift. We all need to reach up and ask God to help us. Would you sing it now? Let's lift the raptors. Sounds good. clear God bless you it's good to be in father's house isn't it brother Casey's gonna pray and then may have an announcement pray with me if you would our father in heaven we thank you for this day we thank you for this time that we have shared together, not only with one another, but with you. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, for your presence, for your word. Father, we thank you for the encouragement that it can be whenever we are going through a difficult time, when we are facing trials and temptations and problems of all sorts. Father, there is nothing better than hearing your word speaking to our hearts and assuring us that we are the children of God and that you care about us and you love us. Father, I ask that you would be with those that are facing those trials this morning in a special way, that the words that we've heard this morning would not fall to the ground, but that they would take effect. Father, that we would, that you would speak to us Continue to speak to us as we leave this place with whatever it is that we need. Father, where we are discouraged, we ask that you would continue to encourage us through these words. That where we are feeling as though we can't go on, that you would give us a supernatural strength through these words. And Father, that you would have your way in all things. We ask that you would leave, go with us as we leave this place this morning. Father, that we would walk in accordance with your will in love and in holiness. Father, we thank you for all that you've done and we ask that you would be with us in all things. We ask these things in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. You are dismissed.